Welcome, everybody, to the Weekly Grind Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Fabry, with my co-host tonight, Dr. Todd Lee. Todd, welcome back. What's up? All right, Todd, tonight uh, we have with us Nelson Jones. Nelson's coming back on the show for, what, the third time now, Nelson? Yes, sir. I think right. well, the North Americans one got, like, dropped. But, yeah, the second one people can listen to. Yes. Yeah, you've been on a couple times. So we wanted to do this here a while ago, and we just did... Shit didn't work out, but now we decided we get you get you back on because we're going to talk a little bit today. Uh, with competition season coming up, it's upon us. The Arnold's coming up. That's like usually the start of the competition season of the NPC and in, in, uh, in the United States. Do's and don'ts, and and before we even get to that, the mental and physical aspect of are you ready to start prep. This is, this is a big one. People that start preps all the time and they're not ready to fucking start a prep. So we'll, we'll talk about that. Um, so I guess let's start with that. Let's let's get your thoughts on it, Melson. Let's let's uh, let's kick this thing off. All right, sure. We go in mental or physical first. Well, let's uh, let's go physical. The physical is easy to see for everybody. It's more visual yeah. thing. So yeah. So let's say let's let's take it all the way back to whenever your last show was, or yep. if you haven't done a show. When you, whenever you start your off season, sure. Um, you want to like when like the day after I do a show, I look at my my progress pictures from probably the day before the show, yep. and I kind of break apart my physique. Okay, I need more quad sweep. I I could use bigger lats from the front. I could um, my chest thickness needs you know development right. like those kind of things. So once you're thinking about a show. Um, you're kind of re-looking over all those details. Have I grown? Have I progressed uh, in the gym? Does like ha- does all of this support me doing a show? Right. Uh, that, that's the first aspect. Like, well, have I grown? Um, and if if you haven't grown, well, did you lose because you were small? Because if so, you have no business doing a show. Right. <laughs> you know? uh, and if you have a coach or, or like a, a good second eye, he, like he or she should be able to tell you that. Like, but the other part is, like, where are you in your diet? Have you been dicking around all off season? Are you right. eating three meals? Because if you're starting to prep, you're not starting with, like, I mean, let's say you're a heavyweight. You're you're not starting with 150 grams protein. You're not like and uh, like I don't know, 50 grams of carbs right. and you know a little bit of fat. Like if you're just eating like two shakes and a couple peanut butter jelly sandwiches, you have six months before you can do a show, right. <laughs> you know, cause you gotta get your food up. Yep. Um, so those are probably like the two biggest aspects in, in my opinion, or I guess, it, well, three, we could even say, uh, the chemical side, sure. have you just been running yourself into the ground? Are yes. you healthy? Because you want to be healthy. That's the big one. Because, uh, I, I, I say like, uh, like someone who let's say isn't healthy, they cannot progress. Right. Like let's even like just a small part of the body. Like the liver, if your liver is overtaxed and it's, you know, the enzymes are super high, I'll give an example. Let's say 300s is a number I've seen recently on someone's blood work and came to me. And they were wondering, hey, I tried prepping with this guy. I don't know why I couldn't get lean. Dude, <laughs> your liver enzymes are terrible. The liver burns more fat than any other organ in the body. Right. You need to be healthy. Yeah. So, I mean, it's it's cool to be like, oh, dude, I'll just blast trend. I'll just, like, do whatever in prep. But if you're not healthy to start with, you will not get lean, period. It's not going to matter. You can, you can eat T3 like it's fucking Tic Tacs. It's not going to matter. Right. I mean, which is cool. You could just burn off your legs. No problem. <laughs> That's what will happen. But if, and, unless, unless you're hiding it under board shorts, right. you, you know... I don't know. It, you have no business. So it would be inappropriate, in my opinion, to start prep in any one of those situations. Yep. Low food, you haven't grown, or you're not healthy. Here's what I see, and it's a lot like that. I see the same thing. I see they came out of their last show. They didn't They didn't take all, all the necessary you know, roads and avenues. They didn't look at their pictures until weeks after. In the meantime, in those two to three weeks, they ate everything in fucking sight. So now, sure. now if it's a girl, she's blown up twenty pounds and she's basically hit the fuck it button because it's a uh, fuck it. I, I'm I've blown up. I'm just going to continue uh, continue to. Or if it's a guy, he's gone to the war. He's put on thirty pounds of fucking water weight and blown up like a balloon. And you know he's unhealthy as fuck at this point. And he's probably not even yeah. training. If he's training, he's training half ass because it's so uncomfortable to train when you put on thirty pounds of fucking water in three <laughs> weeks. Right. We, you know. Yeah, everyone's been there. 
tired. It's like you're too bloated. You can't even put your belt on. Right. Like, yeah, I mean, like, you you do two fucking sets. You know, two sets of, of bicep curls, and you're fucking done because all the sodium and water is rushing in and stuff, and you just it's it's just painful. You can't do anything. It's like okay, fuck this, and you're breathing heavy, and you know, just no. Yeah, We've all seen. Or they've got the lower. Stuff. They got the lower back percent. pumps that are so bad yeah, they can't even about, fucking stand I was upright. Just about to say that. Just you can't even stand like, upright. Was kind of like, oh. You know, and we've, we're speaking from experience because we fucking know this. We've all done it at one time or another, but we see it more than anything. So they do this, and now they're like, now they want to start, you know, maybe cleaning their diet up a little bit if they do. But usually it's it's a six-month window where it's kind of clean for a minute and it's not. Six months later, you're not eating the proper amount of food like you said. You're not eating, you're not doing what you're supposed to be doing. You're taking fucking too many days off of the gym. You're probably out drinking every other fucking weekend or every weekend, you know. And and you want, oh, I got to do a show. Well, why are you doing the show? Are you doing a show because you need to do the show because you had this year goal is to get into, you know, you have a goal in mind of, of being better? Or are you doing a show because you just want to get fucking back in shape because you're sick of being a fat ass? And I think it's the Honestly, second one more times than it is anything else. That's that's a great, another great thing is like, why do you want to do the show? Right. You know? Uh, do you have something to prove? Like, I don't know, like if, if it's a serious competitor... Sure. Like, or do you want to stay title? Like that that's important. Like I don't I don't look down on that. I think that's great. You yeah. want to stay title, you want a pro card, something like that. That's that's a goal sure. you want to hit. Or are you just like I need to get back in shape because I'm fat? Because at that point I'm no one can stick to that diet. Yeah, and it's not and doing a show is not gonna help. You you have to you have to get back into the regular routine of what your off season should be first. That'll do you more good than anything. And just getting back to, like you said, you know, if you're eating two peanut butter jelly sandwiches, two shakes, and, and a cheat meal every fucking day, the getting back to eating the six to eight ounces of fucking chicken breast with, you know, with 50 to 100 grams of fucking carbs every single fucking meal if you're a guy or if you're a girl, getting back to eating, you know, getting rid of all the garbage food that you've been consuming and getting your, your carbohydrates and your fat intake in check and in balance with what your body and hormones need. Right. Getting to that point first is what you need to do and actually get consistent again. And that, like you said, that can be a few months. You know, it's it, right now, even with me being consistent for an entire year plus, it still has taken me and Justin a good couple of months to get me to where he wanted me. Sure. Before sure. I can even think about it. So now we're, we're to that point now where I got fucking five more weeks before prep starts and I'm in a good spot now. But if I had tried yeah. to start fucking dieting back in back in December, it'd have been a fucking I, I I'd have been miserable by fucking February and oh, and sure. not able to pull it off. Right. I mean, what I'm hearing is that if you're not a bodybuilder, <laughs> then don't do a show. Because if you eat like a girl in the off season, you're not a fucking bodybuilder. Right. A well, bodybuilder have- isn't a bodybuilder three months a year. Right. Bodybuilders are bodybuilders 365 days a year. Yeah. Well, awesome. Really, or honestly, for any competitor, it should be that. It should be 365 days a year. Yeah, it doesn't mean you can't take a week or two weeks out of the gym where your body needs a rest. You're, you're, you're deloading. You know, yeah, you can loosen up the diet a little bit for for a day here and there. But it does. it's not a day here and there is what, you know, what we're seeing. It's, it's a fucking week. It's a month. <laughs> you know? You know? Absolutely. I think there's a very distinct difference between someone who competes and someone who is a competitor. Yeah. Ah. Uh, and if, if you are a, a you are you consider consider yourself a serious competitor, I'm sure like, both of you I'm sure will agree. Yep. Most most of your preps in your like your headspace, you're thinking about this show a year in advance. Yep. You know, it's like I'm I'm doing like so I'm I'm competing in November. But I'm thinking about this show right now. I compete November 7th. And I've been thinking about this since, I don't know, August of last year. Right. You know, it's like you are – because you have to. You have to. If you want to make the improvements, you have to do that. I started about thinking about this year, this year, last year. And that uh, this year's competition, I didn't know exactly what show or shows, but I was thinking about it a year ago. Right, right. I'm pretty sure that as soon as I got off stage at the Michigan, Keith, you were like, I'm winning it next year. Yep. That's exactly what I told you. As soon as I won it, you're like, I'm going to win it. Right. And it's like, as soon as I stepped off stage at Masters Nationals, 
I'm like, I need to get Mr. USA tattooed on my fucking arm. So I'll be a bitch <laughs> if I don't win it. Because they're like, oh, Mr. USA, are you Mr. USA? No. No, I don't want to say no. I want to be like, damn fucking right I am. And that's like, listen, you're going to look like a bitch if you've got ta- Mr. USA tattooed in your arm and you're not Mr. USA. <laughs> right. <laughs> when you have to win, you don't have a choice. I have to win. I have no choice. But, you know, how many, how many of these competitors... Unless they're doing a show like within, say, six to eight weeks, you know, they got another show planned and stuff. How many of them are doing their due diligence and getting with their coach or with their second set of eyes and looking at the? You said you said the show pictures of the day before the show is fucking go back three, four weeks out so you can see where you're where were your fucking mistakes made at? Were you three, four weeks out? Were you better than you were on show day? You know, what did I do here? Okay, you know what? I wasn't bad here. We, we we went a little extreme or, you know, we went backwards here. This is what we need to do. I need to look more like this coming in, but I need to start here. You know, Absolutely. that kind of stuff. You have to do your homework and say, okay, and be objective with yourself and say, okay, here I'm this. And if you don't have that feedback for yourself, if you can't do that, get judge feedback, get somebody you trust that has good eye, you know, have them analyze your physique. Hey, what do you think here? What do I need? Well, personally, you need more fucking size. You're too small. Right, right. You are in good shape, but you're too small. You need to take a year. You need to take two years and get bigger. You know what? You got plenty of fucking size. You just need to bring the conditions. So stay leaner in this off season. Battle yourself through next, you know, when your competition prep and fucking leave no stone unturned and just grind and get it done. That's all you need. But you still have to have that plan in place months months in advance that this is what i'm gonna do and you need to stay on top of it that doesn't mean you can't have you know hey you've you've got a girlfriend or a wife or whatever and you want to blow town for a weekend and have a fun weekend with your spouse sure that can happen that's not gonna ruin anything it's when that fucking fun weekend happens every weekend for three months then then you have an issue i I would even i would even go as far to say that if you're a serious competitor you think about like, oh, we're going out of town for the weekend. Okay, well, I have my cheat meal that Sunday. Yep. I I need to bring these many meals. Yep. And you're not even because <laughs> I don't know. That that goes into mindset as well because yeah. I guess I'll I'll start trickling this in as we were talking about, you know, where your headspace is and versus sure. competing versus competitor. Um, if you're going into prep, you need to be at the point where you are not expecting, wanting, or thinking about a cheat meal. Oh my God, yes. The extended future. And if, right, if, right. if you're like one of those people where you're like, I just need to go blow some steam with my wife. I just need to go out and say, hey man, um, maybe, cool, go do that if you need to. You don't need to be competing anytime soon because right now all you're doing is thinking about food. Yeah. That's, well, that's one thing I, I see is I that... Let's just stop for a second because you almost hit something really important. No, go ahead. And everything's being said important, but one of the subtitles for this episode are the tricks and tools. So you had mentioned let's look, let's analyze the trip with the with the wife. It's like you said, let's blow some steam. Well, keeping her captive in a hotel room for a weekend has plenty of steam you can blow off. Right. But there's some <laughs> there's some tricks that I have figured out for this exact situation. And it doesn't have to be your wife. Is that one, you find a hotel room that has a kitchen, at least a range right. and a microwave and a fridge. This is critical. You also, after you book it, you have to call the front desk and make sure they have it because they will fucking lie. Right, right. All right. Two, mail your drugs to the hotel with no return address. Everything you don't want to travel through, whether it's on a plane or you're driving through Ohio and you don't want a bunch of needles and oils, <laughs> then you mail them. All right? Three, when you get there, you buy chicken tenderloins, non-fat, you know, like a spam. You get a bag of peas for each day and you get a rice cooker. It's yeah. easier just to buy a $17 rice cooker than to travel with the fucker. Yeah. Right. And you buy a bag of rice. And I shit you not, this works perfect. You can just put the spray the pan, because the hotel will have pans. If you've got the range in the room, they'll have pans for the room. Sure. Spray the pan, throw the chicken, three tenderloins is about six ounces. Cook, make your peas in the microwave, get the microwavable bags of peas, set your rice cooker, 
And then you can eat chicken, rice, and peas and lay waste to the f- female of the weekend the <laughs> entire time. And never get off your diet. And she, and, you know, and that's the thing is, you're like, what if your wife wants a weekend away? If you do this enough times, she is never going to want a weekend away. She is going to be so fucking sore that she's never going to want to be alone with you for that long. <laughs> or you will fucking face this situation. Wait. Or, or just absolutely sick of your shit that you're taking her places and she never leaves. Right. It's, you know, it's like, you might as well do this at home. Right. Exactly. Yeah, we can do this at home. Well, I mean, the, the, the point is, is though, with that, that is you just, you're there's, boring as fuck. There's ways to still do it and still have, I mean, so you take that, that same thing, that same scenario in the hotel room, you get all the stuff you need or you pack up all your stuff, whichever one you want. But if you got it, at least if you've got one with a kitchenette or whatever, you can go fucking go to the grocery store and buy what you need to buy and, and, and make your food. You can still go out and do shit. Let's say you're like in fucking a fun town, like you're in, like in Toronto or you're in Chicago or something for the weekend. You go do what you want, sightsee and other things, just pack your fucking meals and bring them with you. It's not that hard to do. No, of I went. Go to the I went to the Arnold in 2015, getting ready for a show. I went to the Arnold and I carried my fucking bag with me, full of food, through the whole fucking expo for three days. And I just every time it was time to eat, my alarm would go off on my phone, so I knew what time it was. I'd fucking walk out of the expo, go sit down in the hallway on the on the fucking ground and eat cold food. I didn't give a fuck. It's funny how at these shows, Olympia and the Arnold, and even when you go to nationals or USA's, how many people. Do not have food with them right. at all. No. Oh, no. I was one of very it's few. Just, I'll put it that way. And they were getting really mad normal. at me because I was beating the hell out of them with my fucking bag full of food. <laughs> I remember when I was judging in Michigan, I would always show up to judge with a cooler full of meals. Food, yeah. And everybody would be like, wow, what's in the cooler? It's like, my food? <laughs> I mean, I'm literally judging a motherfucking NPC show. And none of the other judges hey, had food. food with them. And no one in the audience had food with them. I said, like, you're just going to chalk this day up to a loss? I always bring my food like, with ser- me to the shows. Every seriously, time. All, all you got to do is make a potato, six potatoes, and, and 36 ounces of chicken, and you're covered for the whole fucking day. Yeah. Like, it's not that goddamn hard. Well, oh, heck, I'd, I'd say that's even harder than what you really have to do, because honestly... Uh, I get all of my food cooked for me at this point. I am tired of dealing with it. So I've hired someone who cooks all my food, and I just get my chicken mailed to me every week. Yep. It is so easy. Obviously, they – I mean, her her husband is a national-level competitor, so they know like what I can have, what I can't. Right. Um, but it's so easy, and they just send it to me. And I – and literally, if I'm, if I'm leaving for like a couple hours, I have a bag – I can even just throw a scale in there mm-hmm. with you know some Tupperware, and I just measure it while I'm out. I am not embarrassed to measure freaking chicken on my car hood in in the middle of a parking lot. I do not. <laughs> so, exactly. you know, even like if you're on the rush, like, oh, I haven't made my meal, whatever. It's like, is it cooked? Well, then bring it freaking with you. Yeah, eat it cold. Who gives a fuck. Cares? It's like you're already the weirdest one there. Right. <laughs> like sticking out like a sore thumb. You eating you know? your fucking cold rice and cold chicken is not that yeah. big a fucking deal anymore because you're still yeah. you're the weirdo that's carrying your food around. And honestly, like that, that was a good idea about just buying the rice cooker there because again, it's, yeah. like, it's less than twenty bucks. Who cares? It's going to save you a ton of travel. No one. Or a hassle. It's like no one wants to travel with a freaking rice cooker. No. It's the biggest pain in the butt. You fucking leave no. it there and you're done. No. And if you cannot get a room that has a range, what you do is you buy a hot plate and a yep. rice cooker. Yep. And you just throw the hot plate and the rice cooker in the trash. You're already paying fucking $500 a person for the flight. You're already paying a hundred bucks every time you take her to it's dinner. Forty bucks. What the fuck difference does it make if it's forty dollars for you to eat all your other four meals a day or yep. five meals a day, right. rather than having to stop at a restaurant? I remember once in Vegas, I went through five hundred dollars in one day just to get three hundred grams of protein because Jeez. I had a date, I had a girlfriend. So it's like everywhere we we had to stop for food every three hours is a hundred bucks every fucking meal. Yep. And I was like, this is five hundred dollars a day. Good thing we're leaving in three days. What the fuck? I might as well be gambling. Right. <laughs> it's like, I don't even fucking gamble. 
Yeah. It's it's funny. Uh, I think USA's is probably my least favorite show because of the hassle it is with food, um, both buying it and even eating it at the show. Like you're not – that's the only show you're not allowed to eat inside. They like – you can't be in the auditorium. You can't be in the lobby. You have to be outside to eat. What's funny that you say that because I found the opposite, that the Red Roof Inn, which is right next to UNLV, uh-huh. I can get a room for $88 a day with a full kitchen. No way. And and it's yeah. – yeah. And it's – literally the people in Vegas are so nice. They oh, will pick sure. you up from the airport, take you grocery shopping. All you got to do is find one of your Instagram friends from Vegas and be like, hey, I'm coming to the USA. Can you help me out? And they're like, sure. I've even had fans – Buy me a hotel room. Jeez. <laughs> and shit, just so I don't have to pay for a hotel room while well, I was in Vegas. I'll be I'll be going back this year, so I, I guess... You're going to USA, too? Yeah, for sure. I'll, I'll be at every national level show this year. Well, uh, what, what weight class are you doing? I'm, I'm, I'm not competing in it. I'm, I'm oh, not, okay. Yeah, I'm not competing until November. No, uh, I have... Uh, Martin Fitzwater will be in it. I, that's yeah. not a secret. He's, uh, he's, he's coming back to USA. What, what weight class? Heavyweight. Top of heavyweight. All right, good. Then I don't have to beat him. <laughs> that's, that's, that's I would hate to kill his dream. Is, <laughs> he is a, well, he is a big ass dude. I will. Yeah, say he that. is. I know. I'm just using the power of visualization, which yeah. everyone else considers arrogance, and that I'm basically just using positive affirmations I, to I would, increase my dopamine levels. I, I would, I would absolutely visualize and probably take a couple extra IU's of growth. <laughs> <laughs> I already can't feel Daily. my left arm. I mean, yeah, that's good. Like how many points I have to take? <laughs> are you going to be at? Uh, you going to go to Masters Nationals too, Nelson? Um. Yeah. 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 All right. Well, I'll see you there then. <clears throat> I'm excited, man. This is going to be a good year for us, Keith. Mm-hmm. Um, Lots of hardware. Are you um? Are, are you doing anything before USA's? Or are you just roll, rolling right in? Because I know you're qualified. Yeah, I'm just going to go right in. I mean. I thought about guest posing at the Nicole Wilkins, which is the week before, sure. because I'm sure Ramey will let me guest pose anytime I want, because I want to be able to test out the protocols, Yeah, because I've got a lot of new masks, so I don't know how everything's going to work. Right. But for the most part, I feel like you can't peak twice. It's not perfect. It's And I yeah. always peak well, the first show right, of the season, right? right? Okay, sure. So, well, yeah, yeah. Then you want all, all, all of your money in one basket, you know? Yep. Like, and I've tried to spread it out before, and it never goes good for the next show. Well, then, yeah, and you I have never to, fuck yeah. up the first show, so it's just I gotta just assume yeah. history is gonna repeat itself. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Well, also, I feel like that it gives you, you know, more confidence going in. You're like, ah, oh, it's the first time. I know I want to kill it. You know? Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that red roof inn. I stayed there. My sister and my brother-in-law graduated from UNLV Dental School, um, 2000. Fuck was it 2011? It's 2011, yeah. and I and I stayed there, and it was it was even cheaper then. It was like like sixty five dollars. But yes, yeah, it's, it's fucking cheap right there, and it's right next to the fucking strip because Vegas, the the UNLV, the school is back behind the strip. Like there's a fucking entryway, and it's behind the strip, and it's right there though. The entryway is right on the damn strip. And there's a Silver Dollar. Yep, has all you can eat bad crisp buffet for seven bucks, which is within walking distance of the Red Roof Inn. So it's like you can go and slam whatever you want for to carve up for seven dollars. <laughs> <I'm like, laughs> that can be dangerous. I imagine that information being heard right now, and it just you just gave someone the worst peak of their life. <laughs> just it's like, that can be fucking dangerous. It's like, it's like you know what I'm gonna carve up on seven pancakes, and it's like okay, great. Oh, well, good luck with that. <laughs> But he's not going to just well, do it once. I mean, he's going to do it like six times. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's what was uh, I forget who it was. Um, uh, Tom Prince, freaking uh, Chad Nichols was prepping uh, Tom Prince. I, I think I don't remember what show it was for, but he like he was in the room with him, and he's like, okay, have a couple bites of pancakes. And he was hitting some other people that he had, you know, for the show. By the time he came back, Tom had eaten the whole stack of pancakes. And he's like. <laughs> Ah, uh, damn it. It's like, I just, I literally want you to have like three bites. Yeah, right. One pancake, not y- Yeah, well, but what's the three. fucking point of that? Uh, I mean, it's sad. Like, I'm, I'm not going to argue with it. I just don't fucking get that. 
I'm not saying it's wrong. Just yeah. gonna, it's just like, what is three bites of pancakes going to do? You'll go back to the um, the whole hotel thing and stuff. and you. I'm actually, I mean, I had to pack because I'm, I'm leaving town tomorrow. And I had to pack up everything that I needed for, for fucking two, three days of food. Sure. It's not that fucking hard. It Last night, I cooked everything last night. It took me a fucking hour. You go fast. <laughs> I, dude, I had, I had like five or six things going at once. But yeah, I like cooked everything in a fucking hour. And then and then today, I put everything together. It took me 15 minutes to put everything together. Threw it all in Tupperwares last night. Threw it in the fridge. Took everything out. Waited it all out. Got all everything scattered across the fucking counter and everything. It took me 15 minutes. And no, I was talking on the phone while I was doing it. This all goes super well for like a really organized person. Right. Well, so exactly. You can, you can, yeah. If you are organized, you can knock this stuff out. Sure. I tend to move a little slower. Like, uh, I'm sure, you know, anyone, like clients, my wife, everyone can attest that I move slower. <laughs> it's just getting my stuff together. It just takes a while. But it's it's the point of it doesn't take two days to put everything like everybody they, like no, you don't want to do it because oh, it's a pain in the ass it's going to take forever it really doesn't I mean I move quick and I had everything I'm organized but even if you took a half an hour to put everything together or you took two hours to cook it what right. what right. part of your life is that that you know you know that you're you're giving up what are, what are you going to fucking do with that extra hour that you would fuck up your whole diet for I mean you're going to fuck up nine weeks or ten weeks or you know exactly, where you're exactly. at for a couple hours fuck that <laughs> I'm not doing that Especially when you're talking about macro level shows, yeah. Are you are you really going to like five days of your diet being a hundred percent off? No, that's stupid. Take the extra time, get it done, bring it with you. Yep, exactly. And it's like there's like there's okay. So maybe some people don't have to deal with this, but I had to kind of be really efficient with how much things cost. Mm -hmm. And it's like if I don't cook it myself, it ain't going to be super cheap. So it's like when you're, I was sitting t- talking to John Simmons about this. And then I was, it was funny. We're sitting at Lashish, which is like the original Dearborn Middle Eastern food restaurant. And like Dearborn's the highest per capita Middle Eastern people in the United States. Right. And we're sitting there at Lashish and some girl said something. And I said to her, I'm like, you know, you know, you're a bodybuilder when you have a choice. You can either pay your utilities and your rent. Or you can buy your Tren and your chicken breast. <laughs> and then Ron and Ch- John Simmons just started laughing his ass off. And I was like, if you've got a show coming up, you're not paying your utilities and your ch- rent. You're going to go a month or two behind on bills so you can make sure you can afford at least Tren, chicken breast, and rice. Right. Because you can beat any motherfucker if all you have is Tren, chicken breast, and rice. Yeah, I bet you'll be pretty lean with just chicken <laughs> it's like that's it it's like you you can have this and you can have that and you can have your t3 and you can have your clan and you can have your cheap meals but if you're broke as fuck and all you can afford is 300 grams of protein a day rice is free pretty much and one bottle of trends gotta last you are gonna do a lot of fucking cardio and make up for everything else you can't afford. And you're so poor, you have nothing else to do because you don't have electricity to watch Netflix. Let's just go for a walk. So this, is, this is essentially a Kai Green prep that you're describing. Yes. I was way poorer than Kai Green. <laughs> like, I, I literally had to go through the house with a light bulb. You know, like, because I only had one for the whole house that worked. And I was like, uh, I remember once this girl was over, and she was like, "Do you have any toilet paper?" And I handed her a roll of t- t- paper towel, and I was, and oh she's like, "Are you fucking kidding me?" And I was like, "I wish I was." Just spit on it and burn lots. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's awful. I don't know, but at, at, at that point, like, don't you like just steal it from the library or something? Right. I, mean, I, I would do something. Like, I'm take like, a shit at the gas station I'm, and I'm take so theirs. Honest. <laughs> I'm too honest. I would just rather eat tra- rotten food out of dumpsters and fucking win and then be like, all right, coaching packages, 50% off, and then like make the money and then pay off the bills I'm behind. Yeah. But if I steal, I'd be like, I didn't do this prep by myself. I had help from Amico. You know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like I'm, nobody's helping me. I'm doing it alone. Broke as shit. That's fucking care. broke. I'm not, I'm not even. I haven't, 
We'll go through yeah, a divorce because, I'm not that broke. Because obviously when, when you can't pay your bills, it's like, still do the show. Right. You're like, yeah, I mean, see, bills, well, that's show, how I bills, made my yeah, fuck, I'm doing the show. show. That's a, but that's the thing, though, is I had to do the show to make the money. Sure. It's like I didn't have a real job. Other people have jobs. I didn't have a job. It's like you get a sponsorship check. You're like, okay, cool. I can do the show with this money. And then it's like, well, I could buy a bunch of trend and, or I could pay some bills. It's like, well, the, the, month, the check is not for bills. The check is for pay for the show. So it's your entry fee and your paint job. That's like fucking 250 bucks right there. Right. Right? Yeah. And then like... No more. And then there's, you know, a, a bottle of trend is like 75 bucks. It's three bottles of trend to last you 12 weeks, whatever, boom. It's like all your 500 bucks. So everything you can make is going to go towards staying out of being evicted and keeping utilities from being shut off. And then you have to find a way to get chicken. Because you can, I prepped on <laughs> just chicken. I had chicken and vinegar for flavor. Oh, fuck. That was it. It was ten chicken breasts a day, and if is that you, the Joe Levy diet? Upset, and if you're upset, yes. If you're upset about it, <laughs> just think about the dudes in Iraq who were sitting in a pool of their own shit being shot at. <laughs> I I, you know, do like, think, I do think they get like Snickers bars. <laughs> <laughs> they have it better than you. <laughs> but I didn't know like, that. It's like, 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 like someone in a bunker's like, man, it's like. Poor Todd. That dude <laughs> only, has, only has chicken. The poor bastard. No, but honestly, I think. Wait, hold on. Is uh, vinegar one of the six foods that work? I just. I was cheating. I was crying oh. as I ate my chicken because I had to use vinegar to make it wet enough for me to swallow it. <laughs> it was red wine vinegar, and I didn't oh. realize it had one carb per serving. That shit tastes so good when you're on zero carb, zero fat. You have no idea. Yeah, it's like look at you getting those getting those six carbs. <laughs> yeah, that's not mattering. But it's 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 the moral of the story is that you broke the diet. Yeah. It, it, if you get it like it's religion, not logic, it makes it so much more emotionally traumatizing to do anything logically. I don't. Do you you guys know who Anthony Pasquale is? Yes. Sounds familiar. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So he, uh, I think he got second to Aaron Clark when Aaron Clark was pro card. Yes. And and then he competed. He was going to compete the next year. And he was, you know, the front runner. He was Mm going to be, uh, I think he was going to be a super. Um, And he quit one week out. And apparently what broke him was that he had a quest bar. And he knew as soon as he cheated on his diet that his mind was out of it he stopped. Wow. Yeah, and so he's like, he was literally a week out, and a quest bar, if you're peeled to the bone, isn't gonna do much. No, but it was it was it was literally the mental commitment to the prep. He's like, okay, I, I know I'm not in it anymore. I guess I don't care. I'm done. We got bikini competitors eating pop tarts by the fucking box, and he quit doing the show on the day of the show. And he's, yeah, yeah. And he's and he's eating a quest bar a week out, and he quits. That's crazy. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. speaking of Joe Lay, he told me this story too oh, God. about um. Troy Alves, that it was the the USA, and it was the year he basically broke down and went to a baseball game and had nine hot dogs. Holy crap. <laughs> he had nine hot dogs, and he wasn't going to do the show, and his wife talked him into it, and he won the show, he won the USA. What year was that, you know? I don't, I want to say it was like... Troy Alves, I don't remember what year he won. Early, nine, late 90s, maybe yeah. early 2000s. So, I mean... 2001? I want to say 2001, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Okay, 2000s. All right. Jeez. Troy Alves. I think it was 2001 was Troy Alves. Yeah, that's what I mean. Mm -hmm. I bet that that was probably like $70 in hot dogs then. Oh, fuck. (laughs) That's a lot of hot dogs, I don't think the money was the point. But it was like so (laughs) devastated about him breaking down. One hot dog turned into nine. But he still won. So that was like the whole pep talk for like, just because you had vinegar on your chicken, you're still a whiny pussy. But that doesn't mean you won't beat everyone else because they're a bigger <laughs> whiny pussy. Still a whiny pussy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Joe. Uh. It, was, it was so intense. I, the oatmeal was a third of a cup, 
and you could have two Splenda packets on leg day. <laughs> Only one if it was not leg day. <laughs> it was like, it was so, it was such a mean fucking diet because it didn't make any sense. It was just about discipline. It was about breaking you and having discipline and being and knowing that no matter how much you fucking suffer, there's people who are better than you who can suffer harder. He would always be like, Jake Brandon doesn't even eat food. He just sucks on a toothpick for weeks. <laughs> and it was like, because he's a Marine, you're just a pussy doctor. You know, it was like, and it was like, oh man, I hate toothpicks. I was like, was it a cinnamon one? He's like, shut the fuck up. It was like, <laughs> This wasn't a mint toothpick. This was a rhythm. <laughs> yeah. This is just the, the nasty ass toothpick. Uh, this was flavored splinter. Right. It's a, a cigarette butt. Yeah. He has to suck on a cigarette butt for flavor. Mm. It's like, oh. and I asked Joe, I asked Jake about that. He goes, "That never fucking happened." I was like, "Fuck!" I was like, for three years, I always thought I was a bitch because I ate more than just sucking on a toothpick. Yeah. But he did, before Squeams were popular, he wore a weight belt 12 months a year. Jeez. All day long. Before there was Squeams. That was terrible. Yeah, it doesn't sound very fun. It's the smallest fuck waist. <laughs> <laughs> before vacuums came back in vogue, he just fucking cinched on a super tight belt and wore it all year round. Uh, let's talk the mental aspect now of are you ready to compete? Let's say you were brought up with the cheat meals and stuff, and you said that, you know, if you're eating all that shit, and that's that's the biggest thing is it? it I, I think you see too many people, they want to start their diet and stuff, but they're still craving cheat meals. You see it all the time. They're on fucking Instagram. They're like, oh, I, I start prepping two weeks, so I'm just going to eat this and eat that and eat this for two weeks. What the fuck? Okay. Talk about sabotaging your prep before you fucking start. I will say that is one of my biggest pet peeves with clients. Right. Or they, they, it's called, like, they call it, like, I want a last hurrah. Right. Like, there is no last hurrah. You, you've been having a hurrah all year. Right. This, that's what off season is. It's like it's relaxed. Mm-hmm. You get to have a cheat meal on the weekend. Or some people, you know, depending on metabolism, it's like multiple. Yeah. It's like, there, there's no reason to give ourselves a surplus that we have to lose the first week so that we should have worked another week, you know? Right. It's silly. At that point, you just well, started like, a week or two earlier. It's like, it's like the bachelor party phenomenon. I never understood a bachelor party. Right. And then I saw the girls that these guys were marrying, and I'm just like, you know, if your girlfriend isn't hotter than any of the strippers, you shouldn't marry her. You know, it's kind of... <laughs> if you can't cook your contest prep food better than any restaurant can make the same dish. You got to learn how to fucking cook. Yeah. (laughs) Because then it's not so goddamn bad. Like a cheat meal, it becomes, I'm going to make my favorite dish. Like I'm going to make my normal spaghetti, which is fat-free spaghetti. And it's like, that's not a cheat meal. It's like, well, I'm technically not supposed to have it. And it tastes really fucking good. But if you went and just tried to have fish and chips from a pub, you're going to have the worst diarrhea because oh of God. all that fucking oil. It's like if you can digest people oh. food, you know, like if you take a dog and you feed people food, it's going to get <laughs> diarrhea. Then it's like if you're a contest prep bodybuilder and you can digest people food, then you've been cheating on your diet way too often. Yep. Yeah, you should have like an allergic reaction to normal people food. Yeah, especially if you're doing it like five, six weeks out and you, you, you eat like a burger and fries. That's not going to sit very good. That's no. not going to sit very good at all. I mean, I, I can't really imagine eating like a Five Guys burger, you know, like a really greasy ass burger. burger. Right. So generally, that that, <laughs> like, that kind of scares me. It's like as we're getting close. Right. It's, but I mean, I, I've never been the guy like, to be able to get one of those. Usually it's like – I. I don't know. I, I don't like lose body fat particularly easy. So generally, mine's are re- like I get refeeds. I don't refeeds, get- right? Clean refeeds. Yeah. So like when I did nationals with Jordan Janowitz in 2014, we went and got Five Guys afterward and Dunkin' Donuts, <laughs> and it's like the Five Guys was so greasy. I felt like I got punched in the stomach and I couldn't eat like a whole burger. Right. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, this is nasty. I think I'm having fucking chest pains. I was like, oh, it was so harsh. The donuts were okay. 
the donuts were okay. We found Krispy Kreme at like a Seven Eleven and Lincoln Jordan Jay Boulevard. Was Krispy Kreme. Yeah, but <laughs> that was that was it, dude. It's like I can't understand why anyone eats like this. It's yeah. so fucking greasy. Yeah, I mean that's, that's what I was, I was alluding to because normal people don't make their own fucking burger and fries, you know. Or they won't go to a restaurant that will serve you a decent burger and some french fries. They're going to go to fucking Five Guys because it's cheap. They're going to go to McDonald's. They're going to go to Burger King. And they're going to go to Wendy's or whatever. And they're going to get a burger and fries from there. And it's greasy as fuck. And there's no way that if you're diligently dieting for any length of time, you're able to digest that without taking a human-sized shit the next day. It's funny you say that because I actually was making my own burger and fries all the way up to the day of the show in yeah. 2017, and that was the most shredded I ever was. I was using yeah. turkey burger, and I was basically using my carbs for sweet potatoes. I would hand cut them, mm -hmm. I would spray them with, um, what do you call it, avocado oil, sprinkle them with sea salt, and bake them. And I made my own burger and fries, and I didn't feel like I was actually restricted in any way, and I was super fucking happy, and I sat there and watched Vikings and ate my fucking burger and fries and my sugar-free ketchup, and it was fine. Yeah. Like, it was not a hard prep because I taught myself how to cook. Right. And I was a good cook. And it's like, same thing goes with spaghetti. It goes with, if I wanted to make, um, I have this wrap where I'm able to take low-carb wrap and put cod in it and then sprinkle, like, crushed up pork rinds. And then I can put in some fat-free mayo or tartar sauce. And it's like, I just had fish and chips. It's yeah. like, if you take the fucking time to construct the meal, it's <laughs> you can have a cheat meal that's in your fucking macros. Right. That's it's not a fucking cheat cooking. meal. <laughs> it's not a cheat meal. It's you fucking learn how to cook. Well, and I think most cheat meals and stuff, it's it's the whole purpose of, yeah, I mean, obviously you want to be in a caloric surplus or for, for that, that time period or so your body needs that reset sometimes, but... Mostly, it's just a fucking mental break for people because they need that mental break. And you just said you just got the mental break from something that really wasn't that a bad food for you to eat. But you know, but okay. the problem is that they, they don't just want the mental break one time; they want the mental break a hundred times, and they don't. And they don't understand the that way. It's like if like I'm laying in bed and I'm craving McDonald's. It's like motherfucker, you have not had McDonald's in five years. <laughs> Your ghrelin is just too high. Right. Your leptin's too low. You're eating too little calories. Right. Yeah, that's then a, you should eat more calories and just do more cardio because cardio does not suppress leptin. Calorie mm -hmm. restriction does. Does yes. Well, that's a, a very logical way to look at it. <laughs> and, and, and that, Unfortunately, we're not surrounded by logic. <laughs> at that point, so many people are devoid of logic. Yeah. And the only thing they can do is. To, like they're they're writing out food lists in their phones. Oh my god! They're looking at food porn on yep. Instagram, and they're posting it every day, three and four times a day. Yeah. Like, why are you torturing yourself like, like that? Yeah, what the yeah fuck I would sense? totally. If I had a client doing food porn, I tell her to stop. To stop. Well, to stop. I mean, like, if you're embarrassing yourself, shut the fuck up. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. it's funny. Uh, how you know, usually with with bodybuilders, I find they uh, they do it in private, uh, and then you know, bikini competitors post it. <laughs> I find like they do it more like they're not as ashamed of it because like the stigma isn't there. Right. But there's a stigma with bodybuilders like if yeah. you're weak, then you're not really a bodybuilder. It's like you know one of those things. It's a pride thing. Yeah. Well, fat shaming is a good thing for contest prep because. If people are shamed into sticking on the diet, they might fucking stick to them. I, you know, <laughs> you, you would hope that, you would hope that would be enough, but, but it's not. not. Usually. It's not. It's <laughs> not. They don't care. I mean, there's, once there's, I switch to all men, life is so of, much easier. There's a certain amount of hunger that, for some reason, overrides the shame. They're like, yeah. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Fuck it. Well, I don't care. It's, it's, it's half my abs showing is good enough. You know? Yep. It's like that, that kind of headspace. Wait, did you just say you switched to uh, all male clients? Yeah. I just stopped taking women. Oh, and man. My life got so easy. Really? <laughs> yeah. Because there's no drama. There's no complaining. There's no cheating. 
they just you either eat, they eat the fucking food, they lift the fucking weights, and they make progress. I, I find that across the board, there are liars and there are cheaters. Yeah. I I do not find that it's like it is just females. I don't know. With with most of my girls, to be honest, I feel like oh well, I can't say all most of them. A lot a lot a lot of them are pretty honest with me. Um, but I mean, well, I'm excluding. Season competitors. Sure. Okay. Sure. 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 You yeah. I'll like, take, yeah, like I'll take a management. season female competitor any day. But if it's like, hi, I'm thinking about doing a bikini show, it's like, okay, mm-hmm. so technically people call that a first time competitor. I'd be like, this is a normal girl. This is not a competitor. Until they're laying on their bathroom floor crying because they can't eat anything and they can't sleep and they just want to die, they're not a competitor yet. That that really is like your. Uh your welcome home package as a competitor. It's like, all right. <laughs> once, you've, once you've cried from being so hungry, it's welcome. Like, ah, all right, welcome to the club. <laughs> the, my favorite part about this, though, is that they cry about being hungry. Like, you're not starving. You're not hungry. You're eating six fucking times a day. Right, right. You got, it, people, you got people, people in other countries that don't eat six times a fucking month. Suck like, it up. Yeah. You know, it's I think it has to do with serotonin. But I yeah, think that it does. When your calories are so low, you have artificially induced chemical depression. Yeah. Where you're sitting in your car and you open the car door and you look at the cement and you're like, All right, leg, let's go. Food's inside. <laughs> and then you're like, leg just doesn't want to move. And you're like, What the fuck, leg? And then you start crying and you say, My leg's dead. It doesn't want to move. And it's like, I don't even need to eat. I just need to die. And you're like sitting there crying in your car. And it's like, ding, ding, ding. Like letting you know that the keys are in the car. Yeah. In the ignition. And you like bring your shaky hand up to fucking pull the keys out. And you manage to pull them free and your hand just flops. And you're like, that's a bet go. All right, put them in your pocket. You can do this. And you're fucking... You like you divorce your mind into two, so you've got like a cheerleader prep coach trying to talk your happy ass out of the fucking <laughs> car and in the house, so you can eat the fucking food, so that you can snap out of it. And I was listening to to the Real Bodybuilding podcast with oh no no whatever the it's just bodybuilding podcast with um, Dusty Hanshaw and Sean Clarita, and they're talking about how much they cried on their last prep. <laughs> and they're competing with who broke down the most times. Like to see like Sean Clarita like, saying, Yeah, I cried, like I get home from cardio and my girlfriend's like cooking food inside and I like I run out of the front porch and start crying so she doesn't see me cry. <laughs> and it's like and then like Dusty will be like, I'm like walking on the treadmill and I'm just crying and people are looking at me and I lie and I'm like my dog died, you know, like when he feels guilty because he lied about the dog dying because it's fine. So he thinks he cursed it. Oh. And then like, what do you call it? Big Ron was talking about how Whitney Houston comes on and it's like the bodyguard music starts playing and he starts crying because he wants a bodyguard. Cause you know, and it's just like, okay, I thought I was the only dude who cries during prep, oh. but Apparently not. We all fucking do it. You know what we, what we should have done is we should have put up uh, like a uh, a prep bingo like card because honestly, like to crying on a piece of cardio equipment, it's like that's part of. Crying in the car, I think. Like, <laughs> I've gotten yeah, some, then, I've gotten some phone calls from the from the car so, before. <laughs> That is so universal. Is like sitting in your car and like staring at the door. And just oh like my god! Ten yeah. minutes. <laughs> you stare at the radio like it's gonna change itself. <laughs> they just fucking stare at it and they don't know what to do. And then they call you and they're like, "So I'm in my car." Has, has anyone ever quote unquote like caught you? Like you're just sitting there and you've been staring. And it's been like three minutes and like so they're like, are, "Are you gonna go inside?" Right. Oh, I've I've sat in the car for fucking half hour before. Oh yeah, Dude, fucking pull up in I've front of the gym, and it's just like I got to get in the gym, and I was like, I just I can't do this, and you just sit there and zone out, and the next thing you know, you're like half asleep, and then you like come to, and you go, oh, fuck, I got to get up, yeah. yeah. Where you pull up to the gym, and you're like crying, and you start. I actually have a D and D check um, chat group where it's like all the people I play D and D with, we're in constant contact with each other all week long, 
for this group chat. And we, they just talk shit and put up memes making fun of each other the, constantly. And it's just about how bad can you burn somebody? Says, <laughs> they're not bodybuilders, so they're not sensitive at all. They don't fucking lift. They're just super smart people that don't give a fuck. And they're vicious, right? And I'm just like, yeah, guys, I'm sitting in my car crying. Like, I'm trying to go through emotional support. <laughs> they just start tearing into me. and like, fucking tripping at me so hard. <laughs> and I'm just like, <laughs> and like, we're sitting there. It's three cancers and a Gemini. So it's like, nobody's like an aggressive person, you would think. But they know exactly what to do to hurt you the worst. And so it's like, I'm like, you know what? All right, fine. I'm going to go in there. And I'm going to max out my fucking tricep close grip bench. And I'm going to do each rep for you. And I was thinking, like, if I miss a rep when I call somebody's name, they die. And so I went in. <laughs> and so, like, I saved the meanest one for last. And I got one rep for each of them with, like, 340. And my PR before that was 315. And I was like, oh, they all get to live. Okay. I got it. And that was, like, the weirdest way to motivate myself to get in the gym was I was so tired. I got out of the car, went around to the passenger side to get my gym bag, flopped in the passenger side of the seat, got out again, walked into the gym, sat down on the couch, sat there for 10 minutes, found out my favorite band had an album that just released that day, put it on. It was so fucking heavy. I was like, wow. I came completely to life, ran through the workout, broke PRs, Went, walked around my subdivision for three hours after it. That's how good that album was. So it's funny how no matter how miserable you are, if it's the right shit, the right tunes, It'll help. it can totally fucking give you what you need to get through that. Whether yeah. it's like you, you might not have any serotonin, but you can get a dopamine fix from the, like the best album you've ever heard. If it just happens to drop that day. It was the last arm day before the Michigan. And it was like... I was doing a thousand calories worth of cardio a day. I was eating sixteen hundred calories a day, and I was doing three hours of weights a day. So I was like, three hours probably, of I was doing three hours of lifting, um, <laughs> thousand calories worth of cardio. So if I'm eating sixteen hundred right off the bat, I'm really eating six hundred calories, and six hundred calories is supposed to get me through three hours of training a day. And it was like. So I'm in the negative every day. Like I'm losing like, I'm like 3,500 calories deep every day. And it worked. I don't know, but it was like, if it wasn't for death metal, there is no way I'd be able to get through anything. Jeez, dude. All right. Can't imagine. Have you ever like left the gym on the last day of cardio? Where it's like, you're done for cardio for the prep. Like you've done everything and you just start bawling. <laughs> you're like, you like, <laughs> it's <laughs> over. It's funny. Like, I, 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 I can't believe I did it. I can't believe it. I'm done. Like, I, there's no one can stop me at this point. I, I haven't had one of those, uh, those texts or emails that said, Hey, you're done with cardio now. Which so like, so, or, or like, Hey, it stops Thursday. I've never had one of those. It's, it's been basically like, you know, it's a Thursday or so. It's like, all right, we're good to go. Let's do this. It's like, oh, okay. So it's it's not like it's something I can look forward to. Right. You know, it's well, the way I look at it is if if I'm carve up this Thursday, then yeah. I'm not going to be doing cardio on Thursday. Right, 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 right. Yeah, weigh ins Friday. I'm not doing cardio Friday because right. I'm going to have pain on me. Sure. So it's Wednesday before the show was your last cardio, last workout. I think th- this past show it was thursday was my last cardio session um i mean it was it was not much it was like 40 minutes yeah uh, what, uh, <laughs> 40 minutes dude, my cardio has gotten pretty high like I, i'm one of those people who has to do a lot of cardio um so like, and I, I really don't mind i, I kind of enjoy it uh, but I, you know, it. I feel like i feel like actually 40 40 is like a sweet spot yes know? Like I like more than that, and like God, that's it's a ton. But it's like you're I, burning muscle after forty minutes most of the time. Right, right. So like twenty minutes, like that doesn't even feel like it's like, what's even the point. No, I don't, I don't want to drive to the gym for twenty minutes of fucking cardio. Right, right. And like I don't know, it's like what are you gonna do? Put on a YouTube video? <laughs> it's like twenty minutes isn't very long. No. So I, I, I really, wanted to point out that trick. It says we're on this pro tip. 
all right, there should be like a little bell. Pro tip. Um, <laughs> pick a show you fucking love and you're not allowed to watch it. And yeah. unless it's on the track. Yeah. So if it's 41 minute show, most shows are 41 minutes. That's your cardio show. Yep. I, I came up with this in 2010. I used to take a whole bunch of Ritalin and play Final Fantasy 12 on my exercise bike. So I'd be pedaling and super fast on Ritalin, and I'd be playing video games. And but, uh, were, you, were you not allowed to play the video game unless you were on your bike? Correct. Yeah. I took the chair out of the room. It's just a bike, and it's like, here, snort a line, fucking play Final Fantasy, and so you have to go. <laughs> I'd wake up, I'd wake up, i take, remember VPX? They had this thing called VPX Shotgun. And yep. it was like 20 grams of protein in a pre-workout. So I was like, that's awesome. I get to have my pre-workout and my first meal at the same time. And I would do my shot, BPX shotgun, Ritalin, Adderall, GH, Clan T3. That's a hell of a cocktail. Ride the bike, ride, ride the bike <laughs> for an hour. Get off the bike, take more shotgun, go to the gym, hit hamstrings for two hours. Yeah, come home, do another scoop of shotgun, play more Ritalin, more Adderall, more T3, more Clen, play Final Fantasy for two hours, go back to the gym, hit quads for two hours, come home before my wife was home to do all the dishes and make her dinner so that I could feed her and she'd be less mean to me when she got <laughs> through the door. <laughs> I think. And then when the Ritalin wore off, I would just fucking slam food the whole night because she just picked out constantly. So I, I wouldn't have to sit there and watch her eat. I would just eat as much fucking protein, and sh- tilapia and rice until I was going to puke. And then as soon as I could eat more, more tilapia and rice. And I'd have like four hour window of actual solid food until she passed out. What I would do is I'd put Animal Planet on and turn the lights out and she would pass out because she had so many carbs. Because <laughs> <laughs> if she's... It sounds, it, sounds sort of like, it sounds like some sort of story you're telling like a jury. It's like, it's like, your honor, I wasn't responsible. I was on, you know, shotgun. Right, and, uh, just, and seven fun. shots of shotgun a day. I, I don't even know if you needed to do the cardio with how hard your, like how fast your heart was beating that whole day. You know, it's like, if you just stood there, you probably would have burned a lot of body. Well, fat. the fucking shotgun had the fucking red line shit in it, didn't it? Yes, it did. Yeah. <laughs> it was crack. It was fucking crack to begin with. T three Ritalin Adderall shotgun. The shotgun was too much for me. I remember taking a shotgun in college. Oh, and it was like two or three times. I'm like, yeah, dude, no, f that. That was stronger than Jack. Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. That, that shit was probably be banned several times over. Yeah. Like, I've got a biochemistry degree, a neuropsychopharmacology degree, and I'm a medical doctor. And I knew how bad this was. I was like, he did this it shit anyway. might kill me. I was like, this shit might kill me. As if it was a plus. You know, I was like, I'm totally <laughs> cool with dying during prep. I'm not cool with living, not competing. So I was like, I don't care if my heart explodes. I'm going to fucking come in shredded for the North American because it was my second show. I don't know how. He's like, you should do North American. I didn't know he'd never done a national show before. Oh so, God. And I was doing my own prep. So I was like, for my second show, I'm doing the fucking North American. This was the prep. And it fucking went, well, I came in pretty fucking shredded that show. So, and I mean, Haney Rambod was at the show. And I didn't have a coach, so I used so Haney Rambo was like, "Let me see your abs." And I showed him my abs. He goes, "Dude, you're fucking shredded." I was like, "Shut the fuck up." He's like, "No, you're fucking shredded." Let me see your quad. He's like, "You got feathering all the way up to your hip." I'm like, "Thank you, shotgun." And it was like, "Thank you, shotgun." <laughs> Thanks, shotgun. And Jeff Johnson was there, so Jeff Johnson was there for like my pictures and shit. It was so weird, like the team I had cobbled together just off of what do you call it, Moxie. Right. I was like, I've got <laughs> fucking Amy Rambot is my eyes and Jeff Johnson is my cheerleader. It's like that prep too is extra weird because here's another pro tip. Don't eat your dog food. So in the middle <laughs> of the night, I, I, I would just wake up in the 
literally like smelling dog food and find myself wandering downstairs and I would go through the dog food and pick up all the green ones and eat it. What? And it turned out that the green ones were rice. Oh and my god. <laughs> what the? Because I thought it wasn't cheating if it's dog food. Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, speaking of emotional and logic. Well, like the, the dog gets the carbs and it gets fatter but like you eat the dog food it's like not only are you like cheating on your diet it's like you're cheating with the grossest thing you could possibly eat. <laughs> like, you know, it's, like, it's, it's like there's a sense of like masochism that follows every bodybuilder it's like yeah but this sucks so it, I'm a can hey, I'm can a cancer <laughs> you gotta watch their Zodiac episode I explain it all in the Zodiac episode how cancers are like the silent but deadly competitor because they actually like the suffering. They do. Yeah, I, I don't even. I don't even know what, uh, like what sign or of the zodiac I would be. What's your birthday? Like, well, what's your birthday? Uh, March second. So you're an Aries. Yeah, he's an Aries. No, he's a Pisces. Uh oh. Oh fuck! Don't, do not watch that episode. <laughs> <laughs> We're not very nice to those. You do, you oh, well, watch my ex-wife's a Pisces. <laughs> yeah, my, I don't, my ex-girlfriend's a Pisces. Three of them. Oh. Jeez. Well, I, yeah, I don't know anything about that stuff at all. I've never... Uh, oh. it's fantastic. Don't watch that episode. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever you do, don't watch that episode. Yeah. Jeez, a bunch, of, a bunch of haters over here. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> oh, my God. <sighs> that was... You that just, rich. Todd, that might have been the weirdest thing you've ever said about eating the dog food. <laughs> you don't think I knew when I was eating it how weird it was? <laughs> <laughs> I was but the best part is oh I would God. go to the organic pet store and I would like check out organic dog food. <laughs> and then I'd go talk to my wife. I like, I'm thinking about switching Cujo over to a organic dog food why <laughs> it's like it's, it might be good for his coat it's like he's a fucking dog it's like okay she's like you don't even believe in eating organic it's like but the parts of the animals she's like shut up and i was like okay well um <laughs> I, I believe in buying organic when uh, i'm gonna put it in my body it's just touching all the other crap in the bag right like, I, I want my organic green rice <laughs> I know. It's so stupid because it's like when other people have their food porn list, oh. it was me going and looking at different brands of dog food. Yeah, because oh, that's, that's what I was cheating up. with. Yeah, that that was. Uh, it, it's a weird. Like, I mean, I guess everyone has like their thing. It's like that's a weird thing, you know. Oh, I've never eaten dog food. I didn't so. feel guilty or ashamed about it either. To tie into your previous point. Oh. Yeah, well, I mean, you know. Yeah, fuck it. You, you, you gotta do you, you know? I mean, if, if you want, who cares? Like, I'm, I'm not like, I mean, I was initially judging. I guess I'm not judging anymore. It's just one of those things like... I, <laughs> I was I mean, like, initially all, judging. Like, like, absolutely no one gets out of, especially like one of their first preps, unscathed. Like, absolutely, oh, no. Like, a prep will tell you a lot about yourself. Yeah. And like, like how, how weak or strong mentally you are, and it will break you down. Yep. Like I said, man, you don't, you're not ready unless you're either crying on your bathroom floor or you're sitting in your car and you're like, I can't get out. Yeah. Or you're, or you're like yelling from the freaking pantry to your wife on oh, one minute while you're eating dog food. Really, like, <laughs> that's, no, I did it when she was sleeping. No, I totally did it when she was sleeping. I would sneak down there. I didn't even want the dog to know. <laughs> I, I was so crafty I was so crafty about how I would sneak down the steps I knew where the creeks would be I was like I was so good about it I'm such a good dog food thief want, would, it, would it be more embarrassed if your wife came in and saw you or the dog she would totally expect it she'd yeah. be like <laughs> she would just look at me eating dog food and she would just be like okay and she would walk away because I do some weird ass shit I mean I was the weirdest motherfucker she ever met in high school, so it never changed after that. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you set the bar pretty high. <laughs> in, in high school, we had this play where, like, it was so fucked up that she basically had to stake me in the coffin. Like, I, it was like a, I, I was the director and the victim in the play that we did for advanced drama. Mm -hmm. So... And she didn't want to stake me because she didn't want to kill me because it was me. 
And then same thing, we went to this haunted house where um, in like after we got married, just like 10 years later, still weird. And I was in a guillotine and she had to pull the cord to cut my head off. Yeah. And she couldn't do it. She just fucking started bawling and crying. It was so fucking weird. And then this one time for, um, it was a Halloween party that we had at a mortuary and there were coffins, right? And so we both got locked in the same coffin and she started spazzing. It was like I was the old Roman thing where you get tied, thrown into a bag with like a rooster, a cat, and a snake, and they throw you in the river. <laughs> it's like, I'm in this coffin with her, and she's clawing me and hitting me and shit. And I was like, what are you doing? I can't open it either. And I was like, I'm not the one who locked this in here. Yeah. Oh, Jeez. Wow. Well, because before you got in the coffin, you had to walk through the room with all the cadavers that were being embalmed at the same time. Yeah. You know what? The, the good news there is you already know that she's not going to murder you because she couldn't do it like fake. Right. You know? <laughs> so do you have you have peace of mind like to go to sleep at night and, like there's no way she's gonna kill you while you sleep no. i never thought of that yeah that totally. explains so much with the with the girlfriends that came afterward <laughs> yeah because like i just got fitted for a cpap machine because i like 10 years ago i had a girlfriend who said if you keep snoring i'm gonna slit your fucking throat while you're sleeping oh, okay. and the next day she came home She's like, we're moving? I'm like, yep. We moved across the street, and it was a two-bedroom apartment. I'm like, this is your bedroom. (laughs) (laughs) It was like, there is two solutions for this. One was stop snoring, which I can't do. The other is, you're not allowed to sleep with me anymore. No kidding. Here's your bedroom. She was pissed, but (sighs) she she got much better restful sleep. She was pissed after the uh, murder threat? (laughs) She doesn't consider it to be a problem. Oh, <laughs> this is the one. This is the nicest one too. She was the cancer. This is the one that pulled the gun on me twice. And I was like, <laughs> uh, <laughs> "Oh my this god!" This from a bodybuilding show to Todd's fucking <laughs> marital affairs, real quick. There was no marital affair. Oh, That's like another God. bad thing about me is I'm actually a good guy. I actually never do anything Whew. that's really wrong. Time. I just say a bunch of shit that hurts people's feelings yeah. so they feel like it. Yeah, so, I, I'm sure in, in, in their, their case, they'd probably take that as worse. You know, oh, yeah. They, they are, you know, threatening to kill you over snoring and, and stuff. <laughs> and they using guns. <laughs> I was like... Uh, that was the weirdest one, too, is I didn't even see that one coming. Is that she, she just whips around, she's got a Walter PPK, and she's pointing it at me. And I, and I was just like, you know, that's a Walter PPK, favorite weapon of James Bond. It's a 380 auto, 9 millimeters by 19 millimeter casing, and holds seven in the clip. She goes, I only need one to kill you. And I was like, how good of a shot are you? I was like, we're eight feet away from each other, <laughs> and I don't think I've ever used that ink before. And, and she actually put it away. I talked her out of it. You I, you annoyed her out of it. <laughs> That's what he did. <laughs> you annoyed her out of it. <laughs> yes. Like, He's giving place. her the exact specs of the fucking gun. She's like, all right, we shut the fuck up already. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, I'll put this away before you give me a fun fact about the safety how to clean it. <laughs> <Right>. so, <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, my God. Uh, the next time it was a 44 Magnum, unregistered with no serial number. Oh, I didn't uh, shit that time. Yeah. Oh, it's just like, she's like, I've already got a hole dug in the back, in the backyard, and I've got a truck pulled up to that window to throw your body in. To tri- and I was like, wow, you really planned this one out. She goes, no one knows you're here either. <laughs> oh, Jesus and there's no way past me to any exit. Oh. I was like, wow, you really put this one together. I'm really impressed. Like, you'll totally get away with this. And then you just shut the fuck up, right? I don't remember how I talked my way out of that one. Oh, God. What's funny is she goes, Todd, we can talk his way out of anything. I remember once we were in the car, and I was going 90 on the freeway smoking weed past the cop. He pulled us over. (laughs) He puts me in the back of the car cop car handcuffed 
and I managed to talk my way out of the, that one. She goes, how the fuck did you not get arrested? I've never seen someone handcuffed in the back of a cop car and talk their way out of it before. I was like, you've never seen me handcuffed in the back of a cop car. <laughs> That's like the third time I've done that. <laughs> oh, Jesus <geez. laughs> Christ. <laughs> once when I was 17, once when I was 20, and I think that time I was 33. <sighs> That's awful. Ugh. I forgot where we were. It's not as good. <laughs> well, you know, I believe this stemmed from like you know, some sort of form. Oh, I, I was like, eating the dog food. This eating the weird shit. Being mentally weak. Mentally to, weak. To eating the green rice out of a dog food container. Right. And then mm. it, it, we went down the, uh, through the memoirs of uh, Todd Lee's. Relationships. Uh, an angry. Angry uh, girlfriends. Breakfast. Yeah. <laughs> What's funny is this shit works for Fuad and Luke. So me and Keith made a decision that we were going to like pepper some interesting stories in with all the bodies. Oh, for about. sure. You, you, like, <laughs> I, I feel like uh, the like people who are really closed off and don't want to bring in any of their personal life, it gets so stale and boring, boring in the first place. It feels dishonest. Yeah. So. Yeah, it's like you, you, you're, I don't know, it's, it's more real. But the thing is, the quote-unquote real stories sound so crazy, people are like, is that really shit happening, you know? Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, some of the shit you just can't make up. believe that I don't use testosterone, that I only use Deco. Right. So it's like, if they can't believe that, right. try this one on for size. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, I, I've had a gun pointed at me uh, twice. <laughs> Four times. Four times. Oh, four times. Yeah. Good. Only yeah. twice was from that girlfriend. No, five times. Five times. I forgot about that one. Once was by my lawyer, which was weird. It's like when you piss <laughs> off your lawyer enough to bring a gun on you. You know you're an if you're totally annoyed. Jesus Christ. First time I was twelve, it was during the first Gulf War. It was trying to get a silver. <laughs> I only had it happen twice, and it was not from any of that shit. It was actually getting robbed. No one's ever tried to rob me at gunpoint. That's yeah. the irony. It's always that I said the wrong thing. Oh. Well, I didn't say anything. I just, I was actually driving a cab. I was uh, 20, 20 years old. Yeah. I really? 20, I was 20. Yeah, I was driving a cab here in Grand Rapids. And uh, the guy, we lost Nelson for a second. And the... Uh, oh. The guy, uh, I felt the gun on the back of my head. Do you want to do all my money? Whoa. Yeah. Okay. Hey, you're back. Yeah, I got kicked out. Yeah, I see Go that. Ahead. So what about you, Nelson? How many times have you had a gun pulled on you? <laughs> I, I don't know, I know if you'll buy it, but uh, zero times thus far. Wow. Now, I'm, I'm not 30 yet, so you know what? <laughs> You've got oh, some time. You've, You've got, got some time. time. You've got give, time. It, give it some time to breathe. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, I I'm I, I'm not in my uh, cankery old man phase, which is rapidly approaching. So yeah. I, I, I I promise embrace it. I, there are plenty of opportunities. <laughs> plenty of opportunity. Oh man! But it is an interesting situation because when you see movies and someone starts crying and begging for their life, yeah. and you're like, I don't do that. Yeah, like, like yeah, it's it's definitely a. It tells you something about yourself because it's it's another thing that like I guess because we said this earlier about prep, it's very uh, revealing of character mm-hmm. and, and like it lets you know very quickly what you're made of. Right. I, mean, I remember once I was like, "You put that away. I don't like it when people point guns at me." <laughs> and they did. <laughs> That's all it took. Yeah, I don't. I just sat there. He he had the gun up against the back of my head, and I was like, looked in the mirror, and I could see him, and he's like. He wanted he wanted what money I had, so I gave it to him. But I mean, I didn't panic or anything else. It wasn't like I was crying and babbling. For, you know, please don't don't shoot me. You know, and some of that stuff in the movies I think is just you know for for dramatic effect. Sure, for sure. I, well, I think I, there's I have, probably people who cry. Sure, I'm sure there is. I have always I'm just wondered, glad I'm not one of them. I've always wondered like if someone tried to mug me with a gun, like if because I I imagine this happening in prep. Like, let's say six weeks out, someone drives and was like, listen, dude, no, get the hell out of here. I have to go eat in 30 minutes. You're holding me up. Right. Like, Can you just fucking take this? <laughs> I feel like so, some, some level of confidence will here, get a non-confident attacker away. Here's my watch. Here's my wallet. Here's my money. Leave my food. 
All right, fuck you. Leave my food. So, if, I if, if someone did try to take my cell phone, though, I, I yeah, that'd be a problem. It would be done. <laughs> like, it'd be done, dude. Because like, even like right now, it's the beginning of the year. I have seven people in prep. Right. You know, you can't take my phone. It's like, I'd rather you take my shoes. Right. <laughs> it was uh, my, my buddy Oz, who's a lawyer, and in my D and D group. And yes, he's also a rules lawyer. Um, what do you call it? He said, Todd, I did something really stupid. Like, he called me. And I was like, what? And it's like, I was walking in my car in Detroit, and this car pulls up, and this guy pulls up and blocks my path with his car, and the passenger window rolls down, and this dude points a gun at me. And I said, you get that the fuck out of my face. I don't have time for this. Get that fucking escalator out of here. And they did. I was like, dude, you fucking rock. You're my hero. <laughs> and he's like, I could have been killed. I'm like, <laughs> no kidding. I was like, but you did it. The point is, is that when push comes to reshove, you bark rather than cow. Right. And that's what matters. And then he's like, no, that's not what matters. I have people that depend on me. Like, blah, blah, and he like listed all these people that need him to live. And I was like, I have no idea what that feels like. I just know that you acted like a baller. And you fucking <laughs> mentally cow people with weapons. Right. That's to my insecure ass. That is fucking him. And I was like, Good. you will have gained so much respect. He's like, you're the worst person to call about real life events. I was like, yeah, I have no concept. <laughs> just, what, like, to be able to real don't life, ask for advice. I survived just <laughs> through out of sheer pluck and wit. Uh. I just, I don't really know how this happened, but nonetheless, you had said that scenario, and I know. Someone who did exactly did that. Yep. They just like, the fuck out of my face. I've had not, not had the night for this, and it worked. <laughs> so, prep. <Huh>. Yeah. <laughs> we talked about dog food, what do you call it, and guns. It's like two things that don't really have anything to do with prep to a normal person. Right. Well, I don't know. I, I, I guess in, in prep, we you tend to spend a lot more money uh, because you know serotonin is you know depressed so you right. want to like, you know, so, do something to make you feel so feel better yep yeah get a dopamine fix yeah, you, you gotta get a dopamine fix so uh, I, you might buy guns I, I've definitely been tempted to buy a gun during prep it's like I start looking at a lot more things you know it's like oh it's like well it's only it's only six hundred dollars <laughs> yeah you know I, I've, I do that too I'll sit there and look at look at I don't actually necessarily buy anything but I'll look at things and I'll start adding up money in price oh. how much does this cost how much is this going to cost you know if I was to get this this and this it'd only be like X amount of dollars and I can you know mm-hmm. and then I think of yourself this is not anything I would ever fucking buy at any other point in time I ever also, always buy tons of crap crap <laughs> did you never use I mean it's, it, it could be that I mean usually it has something to do with bodybuilding sure so like the last prep I know I bought a ton of bodybuilding DVDs I was uh just I, I bought Battle for the Olympias yep. I, I, uh, I bought jeez I bought I didn't have Ronnie Coleman's DVD so I bought all of those you know just like lots of different bodybuilding DVDs and then you know it just random stuff it's like you know, I'll, uh, I'll get on like gasp and I'm like I don't yep. have those shorts those shorts that's, no, that's what I do yep. I'll go buy I'll buy tank tops I'll buy fucking I'll buy fucking shorts I'll buy shoes you know, new wrist wraps. If you don't, need, don't even fucking need the damn things, I'll buy them anyway. That's that's what I'll do. I'll right. buy that exactly. kind of shit. Literally, you'll be like, "Oh, well, I bet my wrist wraps will run out, and like they probably only got six more months in them, so I better buy them now." Right, buy them now. Yeah, uh, I I think my first prep, I think I bought two brand new pair of shoes in the, in like two days apart. Oh jeez! Yeah, so I bought like one pair, and I was like, "Oh, these are good for cardio." But then I need these for lifting, so I bought another fucking pair the next day, and I bought tank tops. You know, bought a couple new tank tops and everything. This and that. Just order shit online, and that's the biggest thing. And I think it is. It's it's a dopamine fix. It's a make yourself feel better because you feel like such garbage at that point in time. Yeah. So I guess there's there's another pro tip. Either you go into prep with ample money yep. or you become the most frugal and disciplined person ever right because there is there's no like middle way 
Mm-hmm. Like you'll you'll get on Amazon Prime and just be like, well, I don't have carbs for freaking September. I guess I'll buy four <laughs> cups of carbolin. <laughs> right. I've never tried cherry limeade. You know, right. so. You know, I, I think I would rather have somebody that does that, though, that goes out and buys shit to make themselves feel better than fucking cheats on their diet. Oh, for sure. You know. Because sure. you it's, get the food porn. It's definitely, you... impulse shopping is one of the least destructive things someone can do. Well, except for, for their bank account, but yeah. Yeah, I mean, it, it's, well, better than, like, it's better than, like, throwing the money on, like, a roulette table or something. Right. Right. But, I mean, like, I, you know how you said the frugal thing? Like, I am that guy. Yeah, yeah. But I will wait until I'm on prep for all purchases. Yeah. Like, I don't buy clothes unless it's on prep. Right. Because it's the only time you like how you look. So you can actually buy clothes and shoot selfies and stuff in your new clothes and then get clients and then the, the clothes pay for themselves. It, it, it's funny that you say that because honestly, I think that's kind of how it works out for me too. It just It's a habit stance. It's not like I thought about it. It's just like I don't buy anything for most of the year and then when I prep, it's like that pretty much covers the next year. It's like yeah. I have pants, I have shirts, I have whatever. It's like, yep. uh, and then it's like if I go buy something, it's for an emergency. Like, yeah. uh, like I had a funeral a little while ago. I didn't have a shirt, so I stopped – while I was driving down to Atlanta to buy a shirt. He's like, I didn't have, I literally didn't have a button down the fit, period. Right, well, they're not gonna fit, ever. You have to have them custom made for that event because you're not gonna have the same body in a couple months. Right, right. I mean, and at this point, I don't know. It just, things are getting a little distorted. You know how it is? It's like, I'm, I'm only 5'5", five five, so. Right. Every pound from here on out is is getting weird. It's like, it's like, it's like they don't they don't make shirts like this. No, no. How how, how, how much you weigh? Because he keeps five five and I'm five four. I'm two forty five right now. Chase keeps yeah. what two sixty right now? Two fifty, two fifty to two fifty two, two fifty three. It depends. Yeah, you know, I'm like the I'm, I'm the little baby. I'm only like two hundred and ten right now. I am eating so much freaking food. Ugh. It. Unbelievable. How many calories are you eating? <sighs> Maybe 7,500. Holy fuck. I was wow. like, I'm at 55 and I thought I was doing well. But, like, so I, like, but my, I know I eat more protein than you. I know it. I eat, you know, it's like, but like, I like my, my first meal is, is 10 ounces of bison, three oh, yeah. whole eggs, and then two, <sighs> cup, two cups of oats. That's the first meal. No. You know? I just puked thinking about it. I do yeah. not have a big yeah. appetite. It's it's Look, it's a struggle. I'm force feeding almost every meal. I yeah, and I man, I don't have an appetite. I'm just doing what the piece of paper says, you know. Right. No, it's, and that's it's, yeah. It's it's literally one of those like like I'm I'm using GHRP six. I'm doing whatever I can. Hey, you know what? This is another good thing. It's like if you're not sick of food, you're not ready for prep for a bodybuilder. For a, like yeah. I'll specify for a bodybuilder, if you're not sick of food, you're not ready for prep. That's very because true. you haven't been like pushing hard enough to get yourself into the position to be able to prep easy. So yep. let's talk about that because you're touching the subject. Yeah. So what most people don't realize is if you're eating 7,500 calories to grow, that means your growth will stop at 7,250. Sure. Which means if you eat 7,000, you're going to fucking lose fat. Yes. So you that, have to, even when you're force yep. feeding yourself, yep. you will still lose fat. That is the biggest That's thing what, with people when they fail is that they they go into a fucking prep and they're not eating enough. If you're going to a prep eating three thousand calories a day, what the fuck are you going to do? Yep. I mean, I'm well. So I, I'll have an example of just like how how crazy this can get. I mean, and I I wouldn't even consider myself someone with a fast metabolism. I just have like you know uh, like a smart eye, not myself, like someone helping me. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so like I'm working with Chad Nichols right now. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, and then. You know, growth hormone helps a hell of a lot. Yeah. So, I'm taking a, a good bit of actual pharmaceutical growth hormone. So, well, what's a good bit, and how, what's your protocol? Because on this show, we don't hold back. Fair enough. I'm taking eight units of real growth hormone. Wow. Yep. Jesus. Four at a time. What brand? What Ser- brand? Serostim. Oh Has, wow. Okay. Yep. So I'm I'm telling you, it is like it is it's one of those things where, uh, oh, I don't have fast metabolism. You do now, so you will. You know, yeah, uh, I, I went to Disney World back, um, 
and I ate every drop of my food, all of my freaking food. I had crap on top of it because that's what he instructed me to do. And then I like wasn't drinking water. I was drinking Gatorade only and or slushies. So I, I was getting a constant freaking like drip of food. Right. Mm-hmm. The first day I lost eight pounds. Wow. And I, it wasn't like, I don't know. It's like I, I walked. Clearly I walked. I mean, dude, yeah. Dude, well, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it was a shocking to me that I lost eight pounds. But it's one of those things where it's like if, if you're pushing the limit with food, you need to stay on top of your food. And if you're like having a good output, then, man, you have to compensate, period. Because that's how this works. And if you're going to do something like that, um, which, you know, I, I don't mind doing that. Like, I know my daughter loved it. It's one of those things where you will be behind for a couple of days because you have to catch back up. You mm-hmm. put yourself in a bad spot for a week. You have a week to catch up. Mm-hmm. And you lost a week. And so, cool for your family. It's, it's okay to sacrifice a week. I, I 100% believe that. Um, you know, in the off season. But once it comes down to it, you know, in the end, you lost a week. Yep. Uh, so, did you do four and four? Did you do four in the morning and four before bed? Uh, one before bed, one in the middle of the night. Ah, uh, okay. So that way you can roll out of bed and start hammering the food and the insulin. Then I, I first thing I do in the morning, it's like this is my own thing. I, well, it's it's actually not very much insulin. I, I only do it three days a week. Uh, right. But I, the first thing I do in the morning is I drink thirty two ounces of water. Right, um, I do that too. Yep. So it's like I think that's very important. Yep. I, t- I take my health supplements, um, and and then I start eating. But sometimes, you know, I, c- I wake up full. I'm not hungry. So drinking 32 ounces of water, although that will start like metabolism and things moving, mm-hmm. I have 32 ounces of water in me, and I'm not hungry already. <laughs> it's it is not yeah. great, you no. know. So it's one of those things where it sometimes it takes me longer than others, and I know like by now. It's if I am disciplined about it, I got about 15 minutes to get that down because otherwise I will be behind all day. And if you're behind yep. all day, then you're up at three in the morning getting that seventh meal in. Yep. You know? Wow. Yeah. That's, that's a brutal amount of food. That's yeah. Right. Well, it's it's, it's, it's funny because like I, when I saw the, like the first diet, I'm like, you are out of your freaking mind. It's like, this is so much like the, the first diet, um, I don't know. It was, just, it was so much meat, man. It was so much meat. So, uh, like, and also it had you know some crap in it. There was like some muffins and whatever. Um, and I, I've literally never done a diet where I had crap in my diet ever. But I well, mean, if you're doing eight, I use a serostim. You need some. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, but I'm also doing like I don't know. It, it, I, I've obviously I've, I've been taking serostim for a, a bit. Right. But. You know, it's just one of those things where uh, eat big to get big is like a lot of people say it, but not a lot of people know what that means. Mm -hmm. It doesn't necessarily mean you go to McDonald's and you eat bullshit. It means you have a lot of real food because real quality food turns into real quality muscle Mm -hmm. and eating whatever, drinking six shakes a day, like, oh, well, I'm just doing the work, whatever. Uh, Well, dude, you're not. (laughs) It's like, you know, there's, there's a reason that. You know, people looked how they looked a while, like, you know, in the early 2000s, mm-hmm. it, it wasn't because of the metric shakes, you know, like, sure, you can get one, two meals with a shake, no problem. But you need to be eating freaking New York strips. You got to be eating your chicken and rice and whatever fats you have in your plan. You know, you have to eat real food. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because like driving that home with some people, like it, it's the, the, I, I don't know if it's apathy or if it's a desire to make things easy. It's like, sure. That's exactly it, what it is. It's like, you, you might be able to like, oh, well, technically the study is this, or it says you can't absorb this much protein, or I I know that uh, uh, that this uh, isolate is more bioavailable. It's like, dude, you're finding excuses to not do what's on the plan. Right. And even, like, even if... The, the plan was absolute dog shit. Maybe part of this is instilling the discipline that it takes 
during, during the off season, mm-hmm. so that it comes to prep, you have practiced your discipline, and you can go into prep, and you've practiced, baby. You know what it's all about. Yep. So when it comes to execution, you can do it because you are a disciplined dude. Well, if you can, like you said, you know, if you can slam down seventy five hundred calories a day for an entire off season and do it diligently and not miss and do it the way you're supposed to do it, then when it comes time for prep and you're starting at 7,000 or 6,500 calories, you'll be able to do that. Yeah. You'll be able to do it with well, ease. I want, like, before we move easy. on to that point, I want to elaborate on this. So let's say we're talking about you, Nelson. Yep. And you got 16 weeks, let's say. Do you think it takes you 16 weeks to get stage ready? Uh, Depends on person. <laughs> I'm saying you specifically, because you're at 7,500. Me me, me specifically, I think I could be ready in 16 weeks. I'll probably take 20, because I'm very anal about being ready, ready. Right. So let's say you're going to do 20 weeks. The goal is to be ready four weeks out, so you can coast, right? So let's say we got 16 weeks of actual dieting, and you have a four-week buffer that you plan on it. Easing yep. up so that your body looks healthy and you look full on stage. Fresh. Right, right. All right. All right. So we're going to start with week negative 16 to week negative four, right. right? As we count down, you're starting at 7,500 calories. How is those calories going to come down over those 16 weeks? I would estimate you could drop out 25, 250 calories every week or every two weeks. And you, after 16 weeks, what is that going to be? That's going to be, you're going to be at like 3,000, 3,500 calories by the time you hit 4% body fat. And and for me, I will say that that would absolutely be obscene and unheard of. Like crazy. You'll be, crazy. You'll be less food than that. Well, I, I don't know. I, I mean, first of all, I, I'll say this. Um, I have never dieted the way that I am right now. I've, I've had, you know, higher protein, sure, and I've had more food and less food, but um, the way that I'm doing this right now, I've never done it like this. So uh, even like, sure, some of the principles like I, I use with clients, like like Martin Fitzwater, man, that dude eats so much freaking food. It's like he, he eats more food than I do, um, a little less uh, protein, but like his, his carbs are higher and he has a cheat right. meal freaking every day, you know, like tons and tons of food. Um, and so it's like, yeah, you think systematically, he, I mean, I believe during the, for the North Americans, he was down to 280 grams of carbs every single day plus fats. Wow. Yeah. And he, he didn't get over 30 minutes of cardio five times a week. Like that's the goal. That's what we're all trying to do here. Right. For me, I, I don't know how it will work out this first time because I've never been this weight. Mm-hmm. I'm a heck dude. I'm shocked that I have abs at this weight, you know, <laughs> shocked. like, like when I tell you, like I have, like I have pushed my weight to 220 before and literally if I missed meal, I was 215, 214. Like it was literally like, and then, I mean, I was very lean last year, but I, I, I think I was only 210. So I saw like when we kind of rebounded out of this past show, um, I started with him after the show. I flew past 220 and I was like, what the hell is he doing? So like, I'm going to get so freaking fat. Right. <laughs> but, but at this point, like, like I'm very open to possibilities because you just, you know, you, you think that you know your body, but generally with, with yourself, like and anyone else, I, I guess with, with everyone with themselves, they are, they stick like if I'm working, like as far as doing my own coaching, I am doing what I'm comfortable with for me. And so it kind of sticks in the same formula. So when you see it outside of this formula, it's like, geez, who, who the hell knows what's going to happen? So I would imagine, yeah, the calories will probably get down to around 3000 maybe, which for me is, is very high for the end of prep, very high. And even, I mean, in my past preps, I've done up to three hours cardio. But part of that was because I've never wanted to be the coach that people looked at and thought, oh, that guy's fat. And right. so I have always done five days of cardio during off season, always. Mm-hmm. Uh, up to 40 minutes in off season. And I've done up to three zero days in off season, zero carbs. Uh, with but you know minimal fats just because I wanted to walk around like like Matt Porter you know I, I wanted to look like people to think oh this guy's disciplined he practices what he preaches um, 
but you know I, I kind of just relinquished the wheel on this one and, and let him do what he does so you think that um, 3,000 calories would be very high I think yeah, you could see that being the case oh for sure I, no, I sure. think your assessment is very fair I it just it's crazy to think about for me because in the past let's say I'm I'll give you an example of like what I've eaten like freaking four weeks out uh, like maybe 25 grams carbs uh, five days a week Whoa. right Whoa. right that, that's dude that's me that's my that's my normal and right. then I never go below 200 <laughs> dude 200 is uh, 12 weeks out brother yeah I never go below 200 except for like the peak week I'll go down to 150 oh man no 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 I, so I remember eight weeks out I was at 50 grams of carbs this past prep And, and that's that's only five days a week. I, I had two zero days. Right. That sounds like that sounds like where I've been in the past too. Yeah. So, you know, it's it's one of those things where it's you you know how it is. So if you hear that, hearing three thousand is it sounds preposterous. It's like right. oh yeah yeah whatever. But no, obviously it's like if you just think about it logically, that's where it looks like this is going to end up this time. Yep. Well, and it's you're eating more, so your body's needing more fuel to maintain the extra mass that you put on. So to think yep. that you're not going to need more calories to get leaned out would be crazy because if you just went back to eating 2,000 calories or, or, you know, 1,500 calories like you were two weeks out or two weeks out, you're just going to end up fucking stringy. Right, right. Well, you're flat now. Flat now so that's, bad you're going to end up being fucking stringy. That's it. It's, it's funny. So I was talking to Chad at Nationals and that's something that he had said was he was talking to somebody and he had come up to him and he's like, dude, I did my diet the exact same as I've always done it. And then I ended up freaking to like, I just ended up on stage at engaging size. He's like, yeah, you dieted the same way you always did. You didn't add any food. Right. You didn't do anything. It's like, why are you expecting something different? You weren't eating more at the beginning. Right. Why are you expecting something different at the end? If it last time, it, like two weeks out, you were only eating six ounces of chicken and uh, 25 grams of carbs, then buddy, that's what you're getting this time. You're yep. going to have around the same muscle. Yep. You're not making any improvements. Right, right. So, man, I think the the theme of this off season for me was just progressive eating, which I I haven't really. Well, you know what? And part of it is it. Uh, I'll admit it's a discipline thing that I haven't done for myself because I I know in the past I get caught up with work and I, like it's it's easy to ignore that alarm when the food goes off for for myself yep. because like I just got stuff to do, man. And so I'm like cranking through updates and just answering answering emails. So it's, it's very easy to be like, I'll, I'll get that food in 30 minutes. Right, and then you know? 30 minutes turns into 40 minutes, and it's like, oh, shit, well, I didn't eat. Dude, yeah, you look up at the clock, and it's been 90. Mm -hmm. and so then, then all of a sudden, you're behind a meal. And I, I know, um, was it uh, 2017? That, that was from January to August. That's what I did. I got caught up like that from till August. And I know after that, I'm like, you know what? I'm not in charge of this anymore. And so I told my friend Kyle that he was go like, I'm like, dude, you're, I'm going to send you pictures every week and you can be in charge of this because I, I know that if I'm doing it right now with how much work I have, like it's just not going to happen. You know? So I don't know. It, I guess it, it happens to, to the best of us where it's just, but this time we're not playing. So what's the show you plan on doing? Uh, I'm doing the Virginia State show. Um, and I guess I'll, I haven't said this to anyone, but uh, then Chad wants me to do nationals. Right. So when's the Virginia State show? Uh, November 7th. So mm -hmm. right before that. Right before oh, that's week, perfect. Week, pr yep. week prior. Okay. So the, the goal is to be a heavyweight. Right. I figured if you're 245 now. That right. you're going to start your prep five months out from November, which is June. That yep. gives you five months. If you put on, you should be up around two fifty-five by then. Yeah. Pound a month. I mean, a pound a month of muscle would put you at two fifty. Yeah, I mean, oh, no. right, right. I'm, I'm obviously not, not looking to be the biggest heavyweight. I'm going to be a pretty small heavyweight, but I'm five five, you know. So yeah, I guess, um, I'm, I'm not, you know. Another thing is, I'm, I'm so sick of cutting weight for weight classes yeah. I, I I dude I, I know you can feel me man it's like I'm never doing it again I, I am never doing it again 
It's not like I know a lot of people say that they're like, bro, I'm not gonna do it, and then the next show they're they're caught up. It's like, well, I was only two pounds, dude. If I'm two pounds away I, and I'm only two hundred pounds on stage, I'm like, yep, put me on. That's it, I'm done. I mean, it's where you look your best. Yeah, exactly, exactly. It's just I look good here. I'm not messing with it. Yep. And it's like I won the overall at 168 pounds, <laughs> but I was middleweight, not a welterweight. Right. Would I have won if I was 165? Probably not. Well, that's the thing. It's like, you know, yeah, especially since the goal is always an overall. For a bodybuilder, it's like you go in right. the overall. And if you have to win the overall, then you got to beat everybody anyway. Mm-hmm. So it really doesn't matter what class you fall in. Now, for nationals, that's different because there's two pro cards per class. It, it is. It is different. Um, but I don't know. It's like I, I think – for my first nationals, I would be ecstatic with the first call. Right. Now, Dominic got fourth at nationals. Yep. And he was 209 pounds. Yep. And he he was not satisfied with his conditioning. Well, yeah. yeah. And, he, and Steve marked him down for his midsection. Right. He's so a, if he's his a, midsection and his conditioning were better, he would have gotten at least second, which would have been a pro card. Mm-hmm. So he would have been 205 or 204. He would have looked better. Right. I agree with you. I agree with you. I think uh, – Means you could do it like at 204. That, that kid has freaking – he has tissue on tissue. <laughs> on top like, of tissue, yes. He is a dense-ass kid, man. Uh, I think that – I don't know. It's, it's just really a matter of time mm-hmm. that he – you know, it might be a little muscle maturity, but and then you know, mental maturity. Like, I don't expect uh, a twenty-two-year-old, wherever he is, to to be a hundred percent on his diet and cardio. I, I don't. He's ex- extremely mature for twenty-two. I, you I would think you're talking to a thirty-five-year-old. Yeah. Well, you know, I I've spoken with him and I've trained with him. I, I know. Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it's um. But I uh. I think, and you know what? I was sitting in the front row at nationals. Um, oh, okay. So you know better than I do. Okay. Yeah, I, so like, I, yeah, I know that like, man, like those that heavyweight class and that super heavyweight class were they were they were awesome. They're tough. And you know what? If any time uh, Tur- Turner Riddle shows up and he gets sixth, you know that class was crazy. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but that Schmidt guy who won, incredible, freaking phenomenal. Right. He walk into the two twelves right now. Yep. Yeah, he looked like a pro two twelve. He, he did, man. He looked freaking stellar. Heck, the second place guy looked good too. Um, Casey, Casey looked really good. Mm-hmm. Um, he was. It's just one of those things where it's like you know what? He, he would have won too, but it was uh, when you stand next to someone who's so dense, freakly built. You know, right? Like like Matt. Holy crap! Mind blowing. Those guys are crazy. So you brought up Matt a couple times. How do you think he died? Excuse me. Matt Porter. Oh, 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 oh. I, th- I thought you for a second you were talking about uh, Schmidt. Um, how do oh. I think he died? Uh, well, he had, uh, I th- I'm pretty sure he had a heart attack. Yeah. That's okay, but like, what do you think caused the heart attack? Oh, man, I don't know. Um, it's, I, I know, well, I, I know in the past he had complications and then he, w- he was kind of getting into bodybuilding again. I assume, and, you know, I, I don't want to like, offend anybody by speculating i assume that it was his weight that had got because i think he was like 260 265 and it, man it's it's a lot to carry around yeah and so if, if you're someone with a history of heart issues like dude matt was smart period he's a, he was a smart guy and i know that he was he wouldn't do anything blatantly stupid i, I know that um it, it just seems like one of those things where Man, sometimes you cannot predict how your body's going to act if you just get your like, your weight up too much and you're carrying that around. If you already have a history, then like blood pressure could be creeping up. And, right. You know, it's like you might have some like arterial plaque that you're unaware of. And, you know, it's like, you know, the guy was just killing it with health supplements and he, he was very responsible in, in that aspect. I, I don't know what he was doing PED wise, obviously. Um, we weren't uh, that close. Um, but cool. it's funny, Taki was actually um, helping me get ready for something at the time. Um, no way. Yeah, yeah. I had, I had just. It's funny. So I, I had talked to him a couple weeks prior, 
Uh, and he told me, well, I had, I had asked him if I should do junior USA. He's like, no, do the real USA. Just to like, do that. I'm like, okay. Um, I'm like, will you help me? And he's like, yeah, man. Uh, so, uh, I signed up with him and I was working with him for a couple weeks before he passed. Wow. I'm sorry. That must have been really painful. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I don't know. It's, I didn't, I didn't know him very well, but he, I mean, he was a really good guy. And, uh, if I ever needed help, he always helped me. And, uh, just a very, very intelligent guy. Hmm. Okay. Well, all you said was you've seems, got heart illness and issues that you carry that much weight around. You're at, at that point, your body's a ticking time bomb. Yeah, I mean, you know, it really is. It's, take so one much. Those, it's one of those things where like, I don't know, it makes me afraid for, uh, some of these really big guys. Like, you know, it's <laughs> like, forget Dallas was three twenty five. You say, you think that that's cool. Yeah, it's cool, dude. But it's like, it's not safe. You know, it's like, uh, well, it's funny. There was a, uh, I think it was a strongman documentary on, it might've been about Eddie Hall on Netflix. Mm -hmm. And one of, one of the quotes that stuck in my head was, he's like, how long do you think people live at 400 pounds? Not long, dude. So I get in to get out, you know, and and in a small way, uh, that is bodybuilding. Um, It's like, we, you got to take it seriously because you don't have a long window in the sport to do what you want to do, especially if you're going to be one of the bigger guys. Right. You got, you know, take it extremely seriously. Be safe. Don't do dumb stuff because, you know, it's as as cool or I guess as as quick as you think you're going to grow faster by turning your one gram of test into three. Dude, it's not going to happen. It's, if, if, if that was what it took, we would have all done that. Right, we'd have figured promise. it out by now. And, you know, and a lot of us have tried stupid stuff like that. It's like, it's just, it's not gonna, it's not gonna make it happen. So, just, I guess, one of, that's one of the things, just one of those, take a look around at, like, some of the people that we've lost, um, and uh, I just don't let that be for nothing in that like you should take it upon yourself to not do stupid shit. Right. Yep. I mean, you have to be responsible. It's, you only got one body. You only got right. one life. And obviously like, you, you know me, it's like, I'm, I'm certainly not uh, one of those people who's like, and I got ready on TRT. Cause I'm not, I'm not, I'm not one of those people. I, <laughs> I don't, I don't, if, if a client is natural, I don't tell anyone because no one cares. Nobody and cares. If, if someone uses less, I don't say anything because no one cares. Doesn't matter. But <laughs> it's like ooh, there's there's something about so you just not like if, if you only need three fifty, use three fifty. Don't use seven fifty because you need three fifty. Um, you know, just things like that. Like we're we're looking to do this for well for as long as we can, and then leave and downsize or whatever you want to do. Sure. So yeah. you know. Yeah, I don't know too many bodybuilders stay that stay that large even after they're done competing. Most of, them, you know, they they shrink down. Most of the time, it's just the less drug use. You know, right. You're the only easy. person I can think of is like uh, Trigilli. Nick Trigilli is still three hundred plus pounds. He's just a big person to begin with. I mean, just I know, but I, I'm I'm guessing it has to do with like so much GH use that yeah, I mean, be. like that that tissue ain't falling off. No, you know, it's just one of those things. Like. I, I, I know like he's publicly said like he's tried to lose weight. Uh, I, I, mean, I don't know how hard he's trying. Like he's eating yeah. Chinese food every day, I'm sure. But yeah, you know, he's not trying very hard. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> but yeah, I, I, I certainly don't want to walk around at like two fifty when I'm fifty years old. Hmm. Yeah, I mean, you look at like Cutler, done competing. Right. He's half the size he was. What's the point? Yeah. What's the point at that point of being that big anymore? And you know what? To, to everyone else, he's still jacked out of his mind. Right. <laughs> you know. <laughs> but I mean, what's what's the point if you're not going to be competing? What is the point of walking around that large? Right. I mean, it's the thing is like once you've accomplished it, you've accomplished it. Exactly. It's there's there's you don't get extra points for hanging on to it for right. twenty years. You know. Oh, no, you get like, health problems. It's it's like that. You know what? It's like having a sweet car. If you have like some badass, uh, like 
old school challenger from back in the day. It's like you're, you, you don't get extra points if you keep it till you're 700 years old. It's like take a picture of it. It was sweet. Yep. And then, you know, yep. move on with your life. Right. Definitely. But I guess that kind of it would bring us to a sober point of like, when's everyone downsizing? You know? <laughs> right. No. Oh, all right. You guys got anything else? No, this, we covered a lot of stuff. This was a really good episode. Fuck yeah, we did. Yeah, this, this encompassed a lot. Hour and 50 minutes. It's pretty damn good. Well, that's, that's pretty short for us. <laughs> <laughs> Depends on some of them are three hours, yeah. Yeah, we did like 90 minutes on just bitching about Zodiac signs. Yeah, it was so, good. Yeah. So, uh, Nelson, you're a great guest, man. Thanks for coming on. Hey, yeah. it's my pleasure. My pleasure. Yeah. Honestly, anytime you guys want. Yep, definitely. We can do that. That's cool as fuck, man. Thank you. All my right. pleasure. You got any, uh, who do you got uh, clients and stuff coming up like, Okay, yeah. In the next uh, couple I, months. So I, I have, maybe we'll uh, get you on junior, with one of them. Sure, sure. Let me, uh, I'll give some shout outs. Junior USA's. Mm-hmm. Um, my client, Nadia, won her class last year. Um, and she's coming back to do it again because uh, for bikini, uh, if you won, if you win your class, you still don't get your pro card. You have to do it in the overall. So she was, it's funny, they gave out classic cards. Right. Uh, to, Two per two per um, per uh, class. Yep. And so people were getting like second place cards, and she won her class and didn't get one. Right. So right. we're going back to do it again. Okay. Uh, then I have, I have a couple other people. I have a, a heavyweight, Kinley Adams. He's going to be doing Junior USA's. Um, I have a light heavyweight, Josh Lewis. He's doing Junior USA's. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I know. You know, Mark Pittswater's going for USA's. Uh, I, I think that's the, the, the big ones coming up. Okay. Uh, I, I think I'll have a couple people in the Michigan you guys will see. So, uh, Who? Man, I don't know if it's a secret or not. I haven't talked to him. Oh, okay. <laughs> well, usually if they live, they have to live in Michigan to do the Michigan. They do live in Michigan. Oh. Do we know that? Uh, probably. Are they bodybuilders? Classic? I, what are I, they? I, I have a bodybuilder and a bigger competitor. Okay. I don't know. That's, that's sure. kind, of, kind of lame to not say. I'll, I'll, I'll ask and I'll, I'll say yeah. next episode. It's like, I'm like, it's just like burning. I want to know. <laughs> I'll leave you guys with some suspense. Well, oh, I, I already know who your bodybuilder like, is. No, I think, uh, I think I got a man, a, a light heavy maybe. A, maybe a heavyweight. So it's going to be a, yeah, a light I, heavier. I know who that is. Todd, you know him. No. Yeah, you do. He's from Jackson. Okay. You know him. Well, I, there's a lot of people in Jackson, okay. none of which have actually done the Michigan before. No, I, I think he worked with Dominic for his last show two years ago. Oh. <laughs> I know who you're talking about. I know who he is, yeah. yeah. I, He's a strong kid, man. Strong I, kid. I honestly don't know if he did, so I can't confirm or deny, but if you throw out a name, I'll confirm it. Adam, right? There's yeah. The yeah. Bull. Yeah. I don't like, I, I honestly don't, like. I, he didn't tell me it was a secret, but usually I don't say anything unless people are posting. Well, I, never I thought I saw him, he posted something, I think, about it. We, it had, we had a really it good It wasn't that, but I think it was he posted, he was working with you. Okay. That's yeah, all I knew. We had a really good off season. Um, like, he's in a great place to start prep. Um, so I don't know. I'm really excited about it. That is a very smart kid. He's very hard training and he is so fucking strong. Dude, he is. He is strong. The kid's a beast. It's a ton of potential, man. Yeah. Uh, to, be he's young, to be young again. <laughs> to be, dude, it's funny because like, he's, I don't know. I'm obviously, I'm not. Like a ton older than a lot of people I coach, but some of the stuff I see is mind blowing. Like their knees don't hurt, they don't have problems with their shoulders. I don't know, like Martin, all that. Like Martin's a, a great example. He inclined four fifty five for six reps the other day. Jesus Christ! Jesus, <laughs> is that the dumbest shit you've ever heard? That's yeah. crazy. 
Luke Sando did that in his video that he just released. I know, he only got a couple more proper reps. Fucking, proper fucking training. I love that video series. <laughs> oh my god. Proper fucking training. <laughs> Luke and James. Fucking repping out with 455 incline. Who's your figure After competitor? Pretty exhausted. Oh, uh, Christy Wall. Oh yeah, okay. Yeah, I know Christy. Yep, yep, yeah. yep. She'll be uh, she'll be doing uh, okay. figure possession. Yeah, I know. I know Christy. Yep. Yeah, she's uh, a- another very hard worker. Mm-hmm. Must be a maybe it's a Michigan thing. Could be. There's nothing else to do here. Fuck yeah, yeah we got shit else to do. It's, it's fucking it's, cold it's, up here in the winter time. Okay, we ain't got nothing to do. You either can lift weights, you can you shovel can snow and lift weights. Yes, <laughs> yeah, shovel it. snow and lift weights. Shoveling snow for cardio and lifting weights. Yeah. There's nothing else to do here. They close bowling alleys. That's how lame <laughs> it is. It's like bowling is too cool for Michigan. Yep. All right. Well, Nelson, thanks for coming on, man. Yes, sir. Thank you. All right. We'll uh, we'll have you back on. We'll figure out and get one of your uh, competitors that's getting ready for something. One of your national ones come on, and we can uh, have them come on with you and talk shit about prep sounds good I have uh, that and then I'll have some pros getting ready and trying to qualify for the Olympia that'll be cool too it'll be actually be even better yet. Oh. Uh, yeah that would be cool like maybe one of these junior USA people yep. have a mod with you yep. for sure absolutely man alright man alright cool alright so for uh, Todd Lee and Nelson Jones this is Keith Aubrey for the Weekly Grind podcast sponsored by Valhalla Labs at Valhalla-Labs.com and uh, we will be back we have uh, next couple couple episodes coming up we have matt jansen and we have uh janae crocker uh, uh, yeah we have well we have to do that one yet i gotta i gotta set a time on that one i can't get that one done yet I'm waiting to fucking hear from croc but uh we will have matt jansen on hopefully next week oh, I just gotta reach out awesome and get that figured out so thanks nelson you're the man I appreciate you coming on bro yeah thank you for having me on all right and- thanks there, guys <laughs>